What's up guys, it's McNulty here. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing well and it is cold. I don't know where you guys are in the world, but if you're in the Northern Hemisphere where I am, it is bloody cold. <laughs> so um, I think that SG also know this uh, because we have got the secrets of the opera, so we're going to put on our dancing shoes and we're going to try and get warm this winter. Um, and we have a, a few brand new heroes to help us out with that. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at these new heroes today. It's going to be the first time that we're seeing them released. Um, and they've given us three brand new five star heroes and also a four star hero to have a look at as well. Um, and then we have the Phantom of the Opera and Odette, uh, who we saw initially as the two first opera heroes a little while back now. Uh, they have been given a bit of a stat boost just to keep them relevant as they normally do. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we'll start with um, this lovely lady, Christine Day. Um, I think that's how you say it. Die. <laughs> Something like that. Um, but let's have a look at her first. Um, and I'm going to highlight a bit of an issue that I feel is is probably going to be rectified at some point with these heroes. But stick around till the end to find out what that is. So uh, first of all, we have a cleric. Uh, we do like that. Cleric class is great because she gets that benefit of the mana shield, uh, which is a chance to resist negative mana effects and effects that prevent the use of special skills. So right off the bat, that's a pretty decent one. Um, the family bonus for the Opera Family Heroes, um, it, they get a bonus of attack, defense, and HP, and it applies to one, two, or three heroes, anywhere from 5% up to 15% attack, defense, and HP. Uh, so it's just a stat boost basically disguised as a family bonus, which is, I mean, it's okay, um, it's pretty decent, um, and it does sort of incentivize you to get more of these heroes because you just get a straight up stat boost. Notice there is no mana boost in there and I think that that would just probably push them over the edge um, but it's not there uh, so that's all right and I think we can be grateful for that to be honest uh, they have a passive so she's got this heal when status ailment expires or is cleared um, so the character receives five percent health every time a status ailment expires or is cleansed removed or reallocated from them Okay, that's a lot going on. Basically, any time this character has a status ailment and they then suddenly don't have a status ailment before the ailment's due to end, um, they will recover 5% health. Now, it's not a huge bonus. It doesn't apply per ailment, um, so it's just there. I don't think that that is quite as impactful of a passive as some of the other heroes that we have out. So, uh, so far the family bonus is okay. The passive here is okay as well, but nothing nothing super powerful. Um, the passive, the secondary passive, the resistance, innate resistance against status elements that affect attack, I do like that one. And I think that that is coming into, into play quite a lot um, as of late with many of the heroes, they're affecting attack. Um, and, you know, reducing an enemy's or an ally's attack is really crippling to a team uh, because it's definitely something that you rely on. We've seen it with the wither and growth effect um, and how effective that has now become for some of the goblins heroes. Um, and it's, you know, carrying along the theme into these opera heroes as well. Um, I do like the art. I think that the background is insane. I wish that they'd done something around the edges of the cards like they do with the Three Kingdoms heroes. I think that following through that theme would be really nice for, for a lot of us. <laughs> Just because we're like geeky like that. Um, but yeah, I do definitely like the art. I think she looks great. She looks like she's having a whale of a time and she's the belle of the ball. Uh, singing her opera song and dancing her opera dance. So, <laughs> so that is, um, yeah, <laughs> that's all I've got to say about that. Now... Uh, let's just switch off the max power preview for one second so we can see what her stats are looking like. Uh, 994 attack. Pretty damn good. That's close to 1,000 on the attack. Uh, 894 on the defense. Again, very respectable. And 1672 on the health for a total team power of 957. Uh, not the highest that we've ever seen, but, but pretty close. Um, so, yeah, they're doing okay in terms of that. Okay. So the special skill for Christine is running at fast speed. 
Um, at fast speed, it's called the Ballad of Passion. She deals 355% damage to the target and nearby enemies. So I would have her just for that, straight off the bat, high attack stat, nice amount of damage right away, 355 to the target and nearby. Uh, that's higher than what you would get with somebody like Quinnell, who's hitting for, I think, 300, and then it increases. Um, you know, I think that's probably one of the higher damages output that we've seen from a from a fast speed hero i'm going to go out on a limb and say that it's probably one of the highest in the game um, especially with the attack stat and and the boosts that they can get on top of that um, now the target and nearby enemies then dance to the ballad of passion for three turns all existing status effects are removed when this effect is added okay so she's going to uh, cause this dancing effect on the target and nearby enemies. So she hits three um, and then they start dancing. Now this Ballad of Passion causes negative 40% accuracy and negative 40% defense. So a defense down is always, always useful. Um, it is going to be for three turns, um, but it's a pretty decent defense down. The negative accuracy obviously is useful because, you know, as a defensive hero um, or even on an attacking team, just reducing the accuracy can help as well. Uh, now, this dance gives immunity to new status effects. Um, new dance status effects will replace this effect. This effect cannot be dispelled. That is very important and very frustrating. Uh, it's the same, though, as Guardian Gazelle gets. Uh, so the effect can't be dispelled. Just remember that if you're going to bring a cleanser, it is not going to work. Um, I believe that it could be reflected. So I think that your heroes like Goldie, like Kitty, like Knuckles, um, they're going to come into effect. And I believe that it can be blocked as well. Um, so heroes with like ailment immunity, um, like Haythor or... Um, I can't even remember her name now, uh, Thalassa, uh, you know, anybody with a, uh, with a ailment block uh, should be able to block this effect as well. Although let's just see, all existing status effects are removed when the effect's added. So that might not be true. In fact, I think I might need to eat my words right there because that could cut through from what it says there, the target and nearby enemies dance to the palette, Ballad of Passion. Uh, all existing status effects will be removed when the effect is added. So that could be quite a useful thing for these heroes. So yeah, I'm going to have to test that out. I did pull the four star of this um, group. Uh, so I'll definitely be testing that out. But I believe from what it looks like, uh, there's no blocking this this horrible dance. <laughs> and that makes things a whole lot worse. Uh, so yeah, the negative accuracy and the negative defense are a bonus. Um, it does last for three turns. So it looks like you're just going to have to wait it out because there's no cleansing it. Um, the only way it's going to be removed is if they defeat, if you defeat uh, Christine in the following three turns, so you can get rid of that effect early. Um, I mean, there must be some kind of workaround. It's just not coming to me right now. So please do let me know in the comments if you find a workaround for this um, or also uh, test it out as well for yourselves. Uh, check if the ailment immunity works against this or if the reflect works against this as well. I'd be really interested to know and I'm certainly going to be testing it out myself. In fact, I'll update you guys on it in the next video. Um, so yeah, so far she looks incredible though. That high damage output, uh, the fact that she's giving negative defense is really useful. Uh, the accuracy means that it's going to make you survive that much more longer and she's going to help the whole team. Um, and yeah, I would definitely put her both on an attacking team or a defensive team. I think that she's a great all-rounder to start off with. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and go for A+, plus Christine. I think you are definitely living up to your name. Um, and to what you think you are. So let's have a look at the second featured hero, which is Furman Richard. This little short shit. <laughs> nah, this this guy. All right. So he is like the ringleader. You can see it in his eyes. He's, he's There's something going on here and he knows something you don't. That's uh, that's what I'm getting from looking at this card. So um, he is of the Paladin class. 
All right, pretty good class. Obviously gets a chance to increase his defense for two turns. Nothing to write home about. Same family bonus, same passive, same passive there. As I've said, I do like the resistance to attack ailments. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's, I mean, there's nothing insane there. Um, in terms of stats, if we switch the max power preview off, we're looking at 937, uh, a little bit squishier, 887 on the defense and 1827 on the health. So really survivable. Um, I think that you can get both the attack and the defense up without having too much impact on the health as you go through the talent tree. So that's pretty good um, in terms of the stats. Again, 957, so the same team power as Christine. And now his special skill is the voice of authority. Told you, he's the ringleader, man. Um, he's running at very fast speed, which we love. Um, so at very fast speed, he's going to deal 175% damage to all enemies. Okay, it doesn't sound like much, um, but there is a stack. So the max stack is 10. So every time he casts, all allies get plus 20% on their attack. And all allies get plus 20% on the defense. And this can get up to a maximum stack of 10. So you can get up to a whopping additional 200% attack. Um, and also 200% extra defense. So this guy's going to be tough. I'm telling you. Uh, this is... Uh, we don't have anything that currently removes stacks. Um from the opposition heroes uh, we have a reflector stacks in knuckles which was like the first time we've seen that um, but the removal of stacks i mean it'd be interesting if you took somebody i'm thinking like um milady de winter but she's running at slow speed maybe even felton if you've got him second limit broken and just see if you can kind of reflect those stacks back onto yourself but i really don't think again it's another hero where they, we don't really have a workaround for these heroes um you know so it's something that's going to frustrate us to no end i think um and he's going to fire off quite a lot i think as part of a defensive team um, he would make an excellent um, maybe tank, actually, because he'd just be increasing the attack and increasing the defense at the same time. Um, so you really want this guy to be firing off as many times as possible. Um, he may not be quite as impactful on an attacking team, um, because on attacking teams, I mean, you've got to think about it. You need those two tile matches to fire off the first time. Then the second time that he fires is going to be after four tile matches. Um, so, you know, you're going to need another two to get the third time. So, you know, that's six tile matches. And I think by the time you get to around about six tile matches, the match is pretty much won or lost either way that you want to look at it. So I don't think you're going to get that boost up way beyond or anywhere beyond 60% in an attacking battle. OK, so just bear that in mind. I think this guy's an excellent hero. I think he is probably better suited to defense. I think he could be used as part of an attacking team, but he's not going to be able to wipe the whole team out. He's going to be better used as a really frustrating defensive hero. So um, because he's not quite the all rounder that we saw in Christine, um, I'm going to go ahead and I will give Furman Richard Let's give him a let's give him a B my B plus. <laughs> let's give him a B plus. We're going with grades today, so he can get a B plus because he's pretty damn good. Um, can be extremely frustrating, but I don't think that he's going to be as useful on attack as he is on a defensive team, even though he's very fast. Um, now there is a third five star hero in this portal. And the third five star that we have is not one of the featured ones. I hate how they do this. You know, I wish that they would just take Phantom of the Opera, chuck him in the bin and give us <laughs> give us what we want, uh, which is this ugly looking lady, funnily enough, uh, Madam Geary. Um, so she is of the wizard class. Yeah, it's OK. Um, same family bonus, same passives. Um, again, you know what I think of those. Um, in terms of stats for Madame Geary, 
we're looking at 927 on the attack, uh, 968 on the health and 1691, uh, sorry, 968 on defense and 1691 on the health. So uh, pretty balanced stats. Again, exactly the same team power, just, you know, wiggle things around a little bit. Um, and the art on this one, I'm really not that much of a fan of. I mean, she just looks terrible. She's She's gone into hiding. <laughs> That's how bad she looks. Um, she's just having a bad hair day. Anyway, so she is running at slow speed and her special is called the summoning of ballerinas. So you can, she's probably like the director, nah, like the teacher. Um, anyway, so at slow speed, uh, she's going to deal 340% damage to all enemies. Okay. That's pretty rough. Uh, she summons a ballerina fiend for all enemies. Now the fiend damages the enemy with 110% attack every turn. That is not a typo. That's 100%, 110% attack. So it's higher than a slash attack every single turn for every single enemy because every single enemy's got a fiend. The fiend absorbs healing and disappears when it's absorbed health equal to 45% of its target's max health. Uh, that is really impactful as well uh, because... A lot of healers don't heal as much as 45%. Uh, so you're going to have some some struggles trying to get rid of that fiend. Now, the, when summoned, the ballerina fiend causes its target to be immune to new buffs. Um, so we have a hero who's pretty much exactly the same as uh, Lu Bu, um, in fact. Um, and in fact, a, a bit better than Lu Bu uh, because the fiend damage is higher. Uh, the fiend health is higher. Um, and the effect uh, it, it lasts as long as the, the the character has ballerina fiends, but that immunity to new buffs is really hard um, to deal with. Um, and especially if you manage to get two fiends on a character, um, you know that's just going to impact the whole enemy team that much more, and it's going to be almost impossible for you to get rid of those fiends um, by healing. So it's just damage every turn. Um, I always use Lu Bu. Um, in fact, I use him alongside um, Ludwig in one of my teams. And um, I just want to have a quick look and see in terms of the... Uh, where is he now? Uh, there he is. Okay, so 330% damage to all enemies. Um, the Fiend has 56% attack, so it's quite a lot lower. Um, and absorbs health equal to 38% of the target's max health. Uh, but it gives the immunity to new buffs and the effect lasts as long as the the enemy has um, or the target has mercenary fiends. Um, so, yeah, pretty much exactly the same thing, um, just more powerful in pretty much every single way. So, yeah, this is a great hero, even though she's running at slow speed. Um, she is an excellent hero and going to be not just useful in Rush, but in pretty much all areas of the game. Um, I love uh, Fiend Summoners for use in Equalizer War. Um, I think that they're really, really good. Um, and I find that Lu Bu actually works really well as a tank when I use him in Equalizer War, even at the higher levels. Um, so yeah, I do like this hero a lot. And I, I'm going to go ahead and give her an A as well. Uh, maybe a, maybe an A minus just because she's not featured. If she was featured, she'd get a higher score. Um, so just... Um, Oh, yeah. Sorry. We've got a four star as well. Let's have a quick look at this guy. Um, so it is a guy. It's Raul. Um, he's just a very effeminate looking man. Um, and he is of the fighter class. So I do like that. Obviously, he gets the chance to revive. Um, and he is a fighter. So it's the 30% chance to revive with one HP. All right. We all know that already. Um, anyway, same family bonus, same passives. Um, and the special skill is called the Ballad of Attraction. Uh, now, he's like a little mini version of the Phantom of the Opera. Um, so he deals a lot less damage. It's 120% damage to the target and nearby at average speed. And the target and nearby enemies dance to the Ballad of Attraction for three turns. All existing status effects are removed when the effect is added. So the Ballad of Attraction gives negative 20% mana generation and negative 20% for any healing received and immunity to new status effects. The uh, new dance effects will replace the effect. So that's if you've got more than one of these opera heroes. 
Uh, the effect can't be dispelled and is removed when the cast is defeated. Now, uh, the only issue with this um, is that Phantom of the Opera is probably, even though he's got that massive damage hit up front, he's probably the worst of the opera heroes that have been released. Um, and I honestly think that, I, I think that every time that I go up against him, uh, aside from just making sure that I deal with that damage hit, um, even the dancing effect afterwards with the with the mana generation uh, and the decrease for healing received doesn't make too much of an impact. Um, you can see there it's the same sort of thing, the mana generation and decrease for healing just in higher amounts. Uh, what does really have an effect is that big 405% damage hit to the target and nearby. Um, so the fact that this guy... Jesus, where is he now? Um, so the fact that Raul is lacking that higher damage, uh, I think he really needs a bit more damage. I'm not just saying that because I pulled him, <laughs> but I really do think that he should be at like 250, maybe uh, 270 to the target and nearby. Um, even if they do get that negative mana generation and negative decrease for healing received because it's only 20% and it, it only lasts... Uh, for three turns so there's you know there's not too much damage going to happen during that period of time uh, so yeah honestly I don't think he's going to be that great I will play around with him just for the sake of learning a little bit more about how these dances effects can be reflected uh, because all I want to do when these new heroes come out is find ways to counter them and I don't think I'm that different from from many of you in that effect now now for the big thing that I wanted to tell you guys about at the beginning of this video. So these opera heroes, I personally with this dancing effect, I don't think that they've quite got it right. Uh, you know where I think they got it right was with Guardian Gazelle. So if any of you guys have Guardian Gazelle, uh, you will know how effective her sort of dance is, you know, Basically what happens with Gazelle is that she gives this dancing effect. It increases the attack of all enemies by 100%. Right off the bat, they get a 100% increase. Uh, now remember, this one that we've seen here, um, well, where, where is it now? Uh, this little guy increases the attack by, 10, by 20%. He's not even doing the dance. Um, but it'll take you five separate consecutive casts to get that same kind of increase. Now, granted, Gazelle doesn't do damage, but she does heal, um, and she reduces all of the received damage as well. And this is a hero that we've had for, for a while now. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, if you put one of these heroes alongside her, especially the ones that do the dancing effects, um, I'm not saying Christine's terrible. She's, she's absolutely great. She's the face of this portal. Um, but would you rather have a hero like Guardian Gazelle running at average speed um, who can do so much more or a hero like Phantom the Opera just because he's got higher stats and he deals some upfront damage. I mean, I know what my answer would be, but let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, let me know if I'm onto something there and you think that they've been a bit lazy with these opera heroes or let me know if you think I'm completely wrong and that these opera heroes are some of the most powerful heroes in the game because I certainly don't think they are, um, and I'm definitely going to do my best to find some counters, <laughs> okay? Anyway, um, we also have Odette in the portal. She's actually probably one of my favorites, to be honest, because she gives the dodge, um, and they deal that damage just randomly um, after any subsequent special skills cast, so kind of like the dark feather of the opera heroes, which I do kind of like, so yeah. Um, but again, not quite as impactful as Dark Feather. So uh, that is pretty much everything I've got to say about the Opera Heroes. Uh, I wish you guys all of the best of luck in your summons. Um, please do drop us a like. And uh, like I said before, let me know in your comments what you think of these heroes. I'm very interested to hear what you guys think. Um, and please do subscribe if you find the videos useful and you don't want to miss any future content. I look forward to seeing you all again next time and good luck with your summons. Bye for now, guys.